Orale mi gente, what's good? It's me, Gordo, back at it again, man. It's been been a minute. Sorry, man, I ain't been doing too good. I haven't been feeling too well, man. Um, but I'm back at it again, man. <clears throat> Today I want to talk about the homie Little Rob from uh, his name is Roberto L. Flores, best known by his stage name Little Rob. He's a Mexican Mexican American rapper, rapper, producer, and actor. So uh, everybody knows about Little Rob. Shit, Little Rob's been bumping for a minute now. I know I like, you know, at the beginning, I, I really wasn't feeling this jam because it was all about the love shit. But, hey, you know what? He's uh he's made a big, big move in, in, uh, in the Chicano rap game. He's came up. I give him a lot of respect, man. I like his music. At the beginning, like I said, I really wasn't feeling it too much, but he has came out with some motherfucking hits. You know what I'm saying? Um, he was b- born September 21st, 1975. So that makes the homie 44 years old. He was a 90s baby like I was. I grew up in the late, early 80s. I mean, late 80s, early 90s. When motherfucking gang banging was real gang banging, motherfuckers was really kicking up dust. Now these motherfuckers think they bang. They don't bang no more, homie. I mean, they bang, but shit, nothing like the motherfucking late 80s, early 90s, boy. Motherfuckers were headhunting, dog. But uh, anyways, he's from La Colonia, Oxnard, California. His his name is uh, Desiree Owens. Excuse me. I got to get my little uh, attitude adjustment here in the morning. You know how it goes down shit. On the brown side of town. <laughs> anyway, the movies I guess he was involved with was Down for Life, Big Stan, Dirty, 187, Shadow Lane. I never heard of that one. I've heard of Big Stan. I've never heard of... Uh, down for life. Uh, what is it? Uh, one eight seven shadow lane. Party animals. I ain't. I never heard of that one. The yard sale. Um, never heard of the yard sale. Banging for the guys. I ain't heard of that one. The block. Volume two. Money, power, respect. Uh, I assume they're probably all low budget films, but uh, hey, you still got to give them that that credit, man. You know, he's still, uh, you know, fuck, he still got to make some some movies. You know what I'm saying? So, you, man, you can't knock the hustle, you can't knock the game on anybody. Not even on Fahid, you know. Uh, you know, as much as motherfuckers try to say that, you know, I'm a hater and shit. Like I said, I don't know. Uh, the only thing I hate on on Fahid about is that he should have just been straight up. But anyways, this ain't about Fahid. So, uh, and oh, and by the way, if you guys don't know who Fahid is, uh, that I'm talking about uh, Mr. Capone. I call him Fahid because that's his name. You know. But, uh, We'll just get back to Mr. Roberto Flores, born September 21st, 1973. Now, see, come on now. They're giving me some fucked up uh, information right here. First, it says born 1975. Okay. That's crazy shit, man. Hold on here, man. That don't make any fucking sense. September 21st. Uh, all right. I'm going to say 75. Okay. Fuck 73. Uh, 1975, which makes them uh, 44. 
All right. Uh, everybody remembers a hit, uh, Summer Nights. Shit, how can you not? That motherfucker was a, that shit used to get everybody jumping, boy. Everybody loves the Summer Nights, boy. And uh, let's see. I'm trying to get this. Uh, I had this shit down already. I'm sorry, man. This pants on. But, uh, man, you know what? I got to tell you, man, little Rob, he's came a long way. I remember when he first started out, man. You know, uh, a lot of people didn't think he was going to make it, honestly. Um, I remember when I was, you know, going back from, from Arisa to Arisa is Arizona from Arisa to, to Califas as a kid, even growing up, you know, see now, now this is what I don't understand. Okay. On his, on the white, 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 or whatever they fucking call it. Wikipedia. Okay. The other one said 1975. Now this one says 1973. It does have uh, September 21st, so I'm gonna have to do a little more. I want to find out the real uh, the real deal on that shit, but because uh, now it's saying this motherfucker's 46 years old, <laughs> that's fucked up. Hey, from 45, I mean, I don't know. It's all good, but uh, and then it, right here's you know. Hip hop G Funk years active since 1987. Uh, one of his labels, BC Records, Familia Records, Low Profile Records. I know I remember him being with the uh, Low Profile because that was one of the, the big things. Uh, and then up, Upstairs Records. Okay, so Low Profile was in 99 to 2002, and Upstairs Records was uh, from uh, just 2002 to present to now, I guess. So that's who I, I, what I'm understanding that he's still with Upstairs Records. Um, I know he's always out here in Arizona with MC Magic. Him and MC Magic are always tearing shit up. And I remember when I used to live in the big city of San Diego, Shit, no six one nine baby, always jumping on the motherfucking uh, uh the the San Ysidro fucking trolley, um heading down to Chicano Park to kick it with the homies in Logan Heights. Boy, shit, shout out to the homies in Logan Heights. OG motherfucker, tri triple OG peanut shit. Why you bullshitting, Gilbert? And uh, hey, homie, it's been a long time. Shit. Eddie, Eddie Hawk, <laughs> that motherfucker was crazy. The homie Hollywood, shit, come on, man. Hey, we used to have some good times out there, man. Be drinking, kicking it at the fucking park. The fucking who does roll up on us and shit. That motherfucker would roll straight up in the goddamn park. We'd be chilling way in the back. Well, they didn't give a fuck. They just smashed straight up in that bitch. But... I hey nothing but good times, man. I love my uh, I love my San Diego boys. Fuck, man, pinchy lumber, man. Yeah, and then uh, now I gotta use this old punk ass. Hey, at least it's a uh, San Francisco bridge, you know. But see, I don't like these fucking lighters. I fuck these lighters. So, Flores was born in San Diego and raised in La Colonia, the Eden's Gardens, a Mexican-founded neighborhood in Salona, Sal Salonia Beach, California. So, he was actually born in the Big SD, but uh, moved to La Colonia, I guess. Damn, I love San Diego, man. I love the IE. We used to always cruise up to the IE, boy. Riverside. 
Shit. Mm. Flores was born in San Diego, to La Colonia. In the in the early 1990s, he began performing under the name Little Rob and the Brown Crowd. <laughs> And uh, and recorded a single titled "Oh What a Night" in the six one nine. Shit, everybody remembers that motherfucker. That that it did not chart. It was it was later featured on his nineteen ninety seven debut album "Crazy Life," with the title shortened to "Oh What a Night." In 1994, his chin was shattered when he was shot in the jaw and in the eye later. Yeah, I I remember hearing about that shit, man. Fucked him up, man. And uh, I think that's why the homeboy always has his lentes on, you know, but part of the game, man, you know. Um... During his career, Little Rob has collaborated with fellow Chicano rapper Mr. Shadow. Shout out to Mr. Mr. Shadow, the 619, uh, Mr. Sancho, and OG Spanish Fly. And mainstream artists such as Paul Wall, The Game, E-40, and Pitbull. Little Rob and Mr. Shadow were in a group called the Mayhem Click. Does anybody, any of you out there remember that? The Mayhem Click? I don't remember that. Mm. But, uh, that's cool. Shit. The numbers 12 and 18, which are tattooed on his forearm, represents the numeric value of letters L and R the initials of his stage name. The number was used during his days as a graffiti tagger. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's something, uh, 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 I always kind of get it confused. Sometimes I wonder, cause I know they got like, I know how it is. Like, uh, out here in Arisa, same thing, taggers, they got tag bangers, they got fucking uh, gangs, pandillero, you know, but uh, I remember the uh, the taggers always wearing the Frisco Bay, FBs, the Frisco Bay, Frisco Bays, or whatever fuck they were called, I don't know, because I just, I didn't rock the motherfuckers, I used to always rock bands, the Ben Davis and the motherfucking Khaki Dickies, boy, that was it. And uh, 501s, you know, but uh, so and of course, you know, back then, you know, we didn't rock with the taggers and shit, but it is what it is. And then they started being tag bangers and just party crews, different shit, you know. Everybody remembers them days with the party lines and shit. Make sure you drop that shit on there if you remember. Drop a fucking comment, man. Let me know. If you guys remember them party lines and shit, no fuckers get on there calling motherfuckers up, you know, to find out where all the parties are at and shit. Those were the days, man. And then, uh, let's see. The numbers, okay. Was this t- the number was used during his days of graffiti as a tagger in two. In 2002, Little Rob left low, pro, left low Profile Records and signed to Upstairs Records, okay? That's crazy because, you know what, to be honest with you, I never knew that he had a Left Low Pro because I remember for so long he was always rock, uh, rocking Low Pro. You know, it, that's what it always seemed like to me. In fact, to this day, if I wouldn't have read this, I would have still thought he was with low-profile records. But, uh, 
you know, I guess that's the whole uh, reason why I do this. Find out the, excuse me here, I'm cleaning up my feet, my so I can fucking, I gotta get this attitude adjustment, man. And by the way, like I, I have all my videos set for uh, kids that are, you know, if you're not of 18, I don't advise you to let your, you know, to get on here or to even let your kids watch my channel because I smoke and I cuss. All right. And uh, not that uh, there's anything wrong with smoking. And I'm sure you guys, a lot of motherfuckers smoke out there and cuss. But I mean, myself, I choose not to, uh, you know, at least let you, or I choose to at least let, I want to let you guys know. So you have that choice. Anyways, uh, so he left low profile, signed with Upstairs Records. He found he found commercial success with a 2005 release, 1218 Part 1, in which the single Summer Nights, everybody remembers Summer Nights. Boy, shit, Summer Nights with bang. Mm -hmm. Shit, I think we still bumped it, especially here in Arizona. Shit, motherfuckers. Summer night. Fucking people, motherfuckers. Clogged up all this motherfucking wax and shit. Moon rocks. <sighs> but, uh. So, let's see where we're back at it again. Let's see. 2005, 12, 18, part one. In which the single Summer Nights received national airplay. A first in his career, Summer Nights peaked at number 36 on the Billboard Hot 100. Number 36 on the Billboard Hot 100. That's a big accomplishment, man. I remember when I used to live out there, man, I used to always uh, see him on the on the the city bus, you know, the MTS, the benches and shit, like the advertisements, I'd always see him and uh, MC Magic there for concerts and shit, but uh, I was cool shit. Anyways, let's see that. So Summer Nights received national air, air, airplay a first in his career summer nights peak that number 36 on the billboard hot 100 and number 13 on the hot rap track chart the follow-up single damn it's hard for me to see so excuse me man i gotta get some motherfucking glasses follow-up single bring out the freaking bring out the freaking you peaked on at number 85 on the hot 100 charts and at number 20 on the hot rap tracks the exposure led to small roles in the 2005 cuba gooding jr film dirty and 2007 rob schneider vehicle big stand okay all right i remember big stand and now that they say about Cuba Gooding Jr., I kind of remember a little some. Of, but anyways, both of which were released straight to DVDs in the U.S. On June 29, 2007, Little Rob made his very first rap appearance in Okin Okinawa, Okinawa, Japan. Orale. Shit. 1218 part two was released in 2008. So this that's pretty, that's feedback right there, man. In Okinawa, Japan, shit. It was released 2008 and featured the single Let Me Come Back featuring Fingas. Um, I don't re really remember that Wato Fingas. I mean, it sounds familiar, but. In 2009, Love and Hate was released, and in 2013, he released a new song called Don't Want to Fall in Love. 
and 2014, his ninth album, R.A.P., Recording in Progress, was released. So, that, uh, and he, you know, he's had a lot of fucking uh, good success in his career, man. Um, and he's still up there. Like I said, he's out here all the time with magic. And these motherfuckers, they... They have sellout crowds, bro. They sell out the whole motherfucking. They sell out whole, uh, the whole stadium here. Shit, him and Magic. And uh, I'll tell you what. <sighs> Maybe having some motherfucking uh. Some uh, shit though, but I want to get into another part real quick uh, about some of the feuds that uh, he had got into. I guess you know, with some people. Uh, I guess at one time, uh, little Rob was in a conflict. He got into some shit with uh, Shadow because, uh, like I said at the beginning. They were, you know, they had their own, their own shit. But you know what? Unfortunately, that's what happens now. It seems like they, a lot of these vatos, they start out together, man. They'll start out together. They're from the same hometown, all that shit. And then they start getting a little play or whatever. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, shadow side of the story. And I don't know. Fucking, uh. Rob's side of the story, only they know, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, and then Royal T, CEO of Low, Pro, Low Profile Records, and Mr. D, CEO of Southland Records. So, uh, he's had uh, some conflicts with these autos. Mr. Shadow would malign, malign little Rob on. Hit singles, Shadow of Your Death. <laughs> ah, shit. Excited and excited, too. These songs were from the album Till I Die. One of the reasons why Mr. Shadow had problems with Little Rob was because Mr. Shadow claimed that Little Rob was not from San Diego. Mr. Shadow claimed that he was from Salona Beach. Mr. Shadow felt that Little Rob was lying to everyone about being raised in San Diego, California in 2005 on the 12-8 Part 1 album. Little Rob also disses his own cousin and the song, I Who, I, I Who Have Nothing. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know that shit. So... Him and Shadow were, were fucking beefing because uh, Shadow was saying, I guess, he ain't from the big ass deep. And it's fucked up. <laughs> and, uh, but in a sense, I can understand. I understand both parts, but I don't know if uh, Rob lived there, you know. So I, but it does say he was born there, but he moved to Salona Beach, you know. So in a sense, he's from Salona Beach, I would say. In it. But like I said, you know, I don't know if he lived there or what. You know what I'm saying? You know, I know I lived there, but I can't say I'm from fucking from Diego. You know what I'm saying? Shit. So just because somebody lives somewhere don't necessarily, you can't say that you're from there. You know what I mean? But who knows, man? That's just part of the shit. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I guess, uh, little, okay, like it, it says, uh, 2005 on the 12 8 album, Little Rob also disses his own cousin in, song, in the song, I, 
I who have nothing. Little Rob feuded with royalty, eventually left the la- left his label on account of marketing issues. And uh, oh, check it out. Who's in the background? Shit. And then, uh, like, okay, Little Rob was feeding with the royal team. Eventually left his label due to marketing issues. Royal team, the, exec- the executive producer of uh, Low Profile Records had created a scam that involved Little Rob's albums to have the same barcode as royalties CDs, which resulted in royalty automatically receiving the profits. A la chingada. According to Little Rob's manager, Little Rob sold over one million worth of his own CDs and didn't receive a dime. Fuck, that's fucked up. Let's see there again. This is just, you know, if that's what happened, that's fucked up. But wow, that's crazy, man. Seeing the only ones that really know if this shit is true are the lawyers, him, and royalty, all that shit, you know. I'm just reading off of what, you know, this uh, Wikipedia. I can't basically go up, you know, and say this shit's uh, facts because. I wasn't there, you know. I ain't seen no motherfucking uh, court documents and none, none of that shit. So, uh, but anyways, that's crazy. And if it did, that's that is fucked up. So, according to Little Rob's manager, Little Rob sold over one million dollars worth of his own fucking CDs and never seen a dime. As soon as Little Rob left low profile, Little Rob. Recorded, recorded a a diss aimed towards low profile entitled "The Last Laugh" on the Last Laugh EP. Low profile records responded with the track entitled "Entitled Writers," featuring royalty by also Dukes Click, Lil Bandit, and Mr. Sancho. Little Rob recorded another diss track entitled "Call the Cops." Directed at royalty on 2002's the on 2002's album, Little Rob also recorded this tracks bluffing, dissing directly at royalty and boo boo hoo and boo hoo hoo dissing royalty and Mr. Shadow off in 2004's neighborhood music. Yeah. So uh, yeah, man, that's some crazy shit, man. There's a lot of shit that goes down behind the scenes that you know we don't uh, know about. So uh, that's crazy, you know. It's it's a trip to hear, uh, you know, because you know we listen to the music and we assume that since they all rep, you know, core six one nine, this and that, you know. But uh, that's just part of the part of the game, you know what I'm saying? And uh, but anyways, man, I hope you guys like my video. And uh, the reason why I do this, man, is just I enjoy doing it. That way, you authors ain't gotta sit there and uh, you know take the time to read it. You can just kind of because there's there's a lot of times I don't like reading. I'd rather just hear it, you know what I'm saying? And uh, that was my main intention on, on this Bahina to start up this uh, this uh, YouTube channel is uh, to uh, talk about Chicano artists and, you know, us coming up in the game. Um, I can see we're starting to make a big rise in the game, you know. Uh, it's about time, you know, that... Uh, you know that we do you know what i'm saying that we it's been a long time coming and i know here really soon we're gonna have this whole rap game sold up um because as you can see to me you, 
a lot of people uh, embrace our culture. A lot of people embrace our our estilo, our style. Um, you know, so with that being said, and I, I'm starting to see it come back a lot more than what I than you know ten years ago, fifteen years ago, whatever you want to call it. But it is uh, to me, it's starting to come back. You know. And uh, all let's uh, start educating our, our our kids to do good um, in school, and also let's stop trying to be our kids as friends and shit, man. Let's be parents again. I remember being uh, afraid of my jefito, but also loved by him. I was afraid of him because I knew what the consequences were if I fucked up. You know, nowadays, a lot of our kids, we let them get away with so much shit. We're so worried about being their friend and we're so worried about, you know, uh, discipline and, and shit like that. Fuck that. You know, that's what's, that's what's a matter with society today. And uh, is it people? A lot of hint are afraid to discipline their children, man. So, with that being said, you know, and I, I know in all reality, it don't have nothing to do with Little Rob. What I'm saying right now, it just the reason why I'm saying this is because I just want to see our hint rise, and without respect, and and uh, us showing our children the the right way like our parents showed us then it's gonna be a lost cause man you know it's but uh anyways gracias i appreciate you guys man do me a favor hit that like button hit that the subscribe bell so when i do come on it rings you guys can hear you know um, I appreciate everybody who uh, supports me. I'm just an amateur blogger, whatever, you know, amateur YouTuber, whatever you want to call it. Um, I enjoy doing this. It gives me something to do. Um, instead of just fucking sitting there thinking of fucking walls. <laughs> but, uh, nah, you know how it is, man. You motherfuckers who can relate, you know what I'm talking about, man. Uh, believe it or not, something like this, doing something like this will take a lot of that time off of your hands of, you know, instead of sitting there and thinking of other shit to do, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I got involved in this YouTube shit. And that's why I hope I get motherfuckers to support me because you know what? It does mean a lot to me. And I in in all my videos, I always stress about our hint that coming together, and you know, regardless of all the, there's always gonna be bullshit, always, always, man. So, but anyways, gracias. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Um, make sure you hit that bell, man. So when I come in, come on, uh. You guys will get that notification. You guys have a good weekend. And uh, I'm going to try to drop another video. If there's anything you guys want to know about, hear about, you know, let me know. I did get one of my videos took off. But uh, I'm going to have to redo it. And um, because, uh, you know, how sometimes people be hating and shit. But anyways... Uh, nothing but love and respect to everybody out there. Like I said, have a good weekend, and I'm out.